Good morning, it's Eve the Creative Curator. Today I'm going to be showing you how to pattern draft a sailor collar. A sailor collar is a type of collar or a style of collar, I should say, worn by sailors um, as part of their uniform. It is a collar style. Um, it is a non-convertible convertible <laughs> collar type. And I have an article on my website all about the different types of collars and styles as well. So I'll link that in the description below. But for now, I'm going to be showing you how to draft a sailor collar pattern using my Hilda blocks. Um, there will be an additional video showing you how to sew it. Um, so stay tuned for that one as well. Let's crack on. Okay, so whoa, we've got wonky camera. <laughs> so what you're going to need for this is a front bodice pattern piece, a back bodice pattern piece, tape, and that's purely for positioning it. You could also use fabric weights. You're going to want a ruler or a pattern master. I'm going to be using a ruler initially, a pencil. I'm going to be using my pen rather um, just so that you can see it better and then you'll want some pattern making paper as well. So to get started you are going to want to take your front pattern piece as I have got here and we're looking only at this section here okay. Then we are going to place our back pattern piece. We want the sh shoulder at neck points to completely like pivot on each other like so. So that's going to be our pivot point. So we have um, and this is so that you can see it pivoting away. And then we want to overlap the shoulders by a certain amount. So let me show you what that means. Now the amount that you overlap by is dependent upon the amount of roll that you want on your sailor collar. So here we have a zero roll and that is going to lay just as normal. You wouldn't make a sailor pattern with no overlap. The basic amount to do would be half an inch, which is 1.25 centimeters. Okay. Now this is my half scale block. <laughs> so I'm actually going to do half the amount. So if I were going to do 1.25 centimeters, I'm actually going to do 0.6. So what I'm doing is I'm pivoting so that my front and back shoulder lines overlap by approximately 0.6 which I think is about a quarter of an inch. I'm not sure I don't do inches as we know. You can do more than that. And it just means that your collar will sit higher up. Okay, so I've got that overlapped. Now I'm gonna tape it into position. Okay, so I've got some masking tape. And all I'm going to do is just pop a little bit of tape here. And to prevent it from moving around, I'm also going to tape it to my board here at the shoulder and here at the back neck on the seam allowance okay and that's just going to stop it shifting around you don't have to do that you can use pattern weights if you prefer but that's how i do it the next step is to lower the front neckline now this is actually quite a fitted bodice on a dress stand it's very fitted you can see the size of the dart it is important that you have pivoted out any darts that come up to the back neck back shoulder the front neck or front shoulder are pivoted out and away so once you've got that clear we now mark in where we want our neckline to fall typically you would have a v-neck so you might have it come straight down this is my bus line so that would be cutting across the boob slightly you could have it higher or you could have it coming quite at a natural angle i think i'm supposed to be taking photos as i go and i haven't so i'll have to redo it so how could you do it? I recommend doing it with a straight line rather than a curved line. And you're going to want to use your front neckline as a guide. So you could either come down from, here's one example, all the way down like so. I'm not sure you can see that perfectly. So I'm going to do it with the colour pen. So I'm going to do the first going all the way down to the best line in green. I'm also going to mark in a point, where's my pencil? two and a half centimeters here so that would be five centimeters at full scale up and then 2.5 which would be another five centimeters up just to highlight different points that you could do so i shall use a different color pen again just to make sure it shows up on the camera 
and then we will use a different line. I don't know if I've got much in the way of pink, but let's try pink. And you can see I'm trying to come from the front neckline, the original front neckline, in a nice angle. Okay, so those are my three possible necklines. It's important to decide which one you're going to go with. And then you're going to get your piece of paper, your pattern making paper. I'm trying to get it mostly on the page in a neat manner. And then what I'm going to do is just to prevent it from squiggling around again. Is I'm just going to tape sections in place. Like so. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our pencil, I'm going to take my pen so you can see it, and we're going to trace off from the centre back neckline, actually let's do from the centre front. We want it to be lower than the armhole. Let's go with this line. So I'm going to go up my, I'm going to go with the one that's all the way down the bottom. Or shall I, that's going to be quite revealing. Let's do it. Then I'm going to go around the neckline then we're going to go down the centre back okay we're also going to mark in the shoulder point so we know where that is I'm also going to mark in the armhole just because I like to have those there for reference but i might yeah we'll, okay so we'll do those in green so this is the overlap and i'm using the armhole purely so that we have it as a guide now we can remove the original pieces because we no longer need them so set them aside because we're going to need them again soon. And then come back with your paper. I'm going to put a bit of paper underneath so that we can see what we're doing. So this is, oh, croup. I forgot to, um, that's rubbish. I forgot to chase this in the front. Hold on. Sometimes you only notice things once you've removed them. There we go. So we need a bit of the center front. Purely so we can mark it in. Okay. Like that. Now I'm going to put aside my green pen because I want you to be able to see things. So we've lowered the front neckline. We've got a nice V. We've got everything nice and organised. First, ne our next job is to square across from the back. So you need to decide how low down you want your sailor collar to sit on your back neck. Okay. I don't want it to be lower than my armhole, but you can do as long as you want. Like this is like the fun for you. So I'm going to have a look at my lady and she's wearing a twirl that I made for her. I really want it to come maybe to about here. So eight centimeters on her, which would be 16 centimeters on my human form. And I'm gonna measure in at that point. And then I've lost my little ruler. Here she is. Oh, that doesn't have my squaring line. <laughs> no, it doesn't. All right, we get the big one out. We're going to square across from there, okay? And to do that, I'm lining up my center back line along with that line. Now I don't want to go all the way past my armhole. I want it to come a little bit in. So I'm going to do a centimeter in, which would be two centimeters on humans. And I'm going to stop there. The next step is like the style line. So my options are to either draw a line straight from, I would need to square off from here first. Okay, so let's do that first. Stand the lady back up again because you should always have a nice square sailor collar at the outer edge. So we're going to go like this. Option one is to go in a relatively straight line, where you curve that nicely, and then go straight from there to there. Or I can create a nice curved line, which I think is going to be my intended plan, so that it's nice and neat. I quite like how that's going to look. So let me just show you what it would look like if we did it penciled in with the green because that's um a good way to show you the difference i think so the green line is if i square it across not square if i do a straight style line the orange line is me doing it in a really nice lovely manner 
So I'm going to put the edge curve at my centre front neckline point where I've got my marking in. And there we have a much nicer shape. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, I could have come out a little bit more. I could do whatever I want, really, because the whole sailor collar part is that it's coming over the shoulder across the back and that it's coming down towards the centre front, center front. The next step is to make sure that you don't have a jagged edge on the inner neckline. So where we overlapped here, this is the shoulder point. Sometimes you can end up with quite a jagged section if you've overlapped your shoulder line quite a bit. We just want to make sure that that's nice and neat. And actually, that is really lovely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over that original green line with my orange line so that I know which way I'm going when I come to trace off. And then I'm going to do the centre back. And there we have our basic sailor collar pattern piece. When it comes to tracing this off, for a sailor collar pattern piece, you should have a front collar, uh, not a front collar, sorry, a top collar and an under collar piece. Okay. And what that means is one piece will be the top and one will be the under. Typically, the top collar piece will be slightly bigger than the under collar piece. And the reason for that is so that the seam, when we sew along the outer collar edge, okay, this is the outer collar edge. When we sew it and turn it through, the stitching will be visible. The seam that we've created will be visible. So by making the top collar piece slightly bigger, we can roll that seam slightly under, and then you won't see it when you're looking at the collar. Okay, what we're now going to do is trace this off on a piece of pattern paper. I'm actually going to use my tracing wheel because this will fit my Hilda very nicely. So I want to create a pattern piece that can be used again and again. So I'm just going to trace off. So this initial pattern that I've made, this would be my development pattern, okay? And that's basically because I have been developing the pattern on this bit of paper. Then I am trying to think how to hold stuff in the right location. I think that's cast a big shadow, hasn't it? Let's try that. The next pattern without seam allowance will be my working pattern. No, my master pattern. And then the one with the seam allowance on will be my working pattern. Now this job is not finished because not only do I have to create the sailor collar pattern, but I also, because it is a convertible collar and because it um, needs to be finished beautifully, what I also need to do is create facing patterns. And that's really important because we don't want an untidy finish when we sew it up. I'm just marking in. Ta -da. It's always a square atlas, unless you're going with a designed centre back neckline, like a V or something. And you're always going to have a slight square. So it sits nicely. You can still see that, can't you? I always feel like if I work in pencil, you won't be able to see it, but actually, you can. So there we have it. This is my centre back. This is the centre front, but I'm not going to write that in there. Oh, rubbish. We forgot to mark in the notch for the shoulder. Really important. Always, always, always mark in your notches. Okay. So this is my original this will be the top collar pattern so when i create the pattern piece i'm going to put in my top collar i'm going to call it my sailor pattern to add seam allowance your know, options are you could have the one piece and then you can lay it on your fabric and you can cut one with a one centimeter seam allowance and another slightly smaller or you could have two separate pattern pieces i prefer to have two separate pattern pieces i've got to remember that she's half size so it's only one mil really <laughs>
So if I overlap my ruler by a little bit, that'll give me... Oh no, this has got to go under because it's my collar, my under collar. My other one was my top collar, which is the perfect size. We only want the outer edge of the collar to be slightly smaller, okay? The original neckline stays exactly the same. So we're going to go... And this is cut on the fold, remember. So I'm going to make it slightly smaller, like that, okay? Put my shoulder notch. So the original neckline stays the same. It's only the outer collar edge. Okay. And then this one, we're making a couple of mils smaller. So if you're only going to use the collar pattern once, you can get away with just having the one pattern piece and then cutting the seam allowance slightly bigger on the other and slightly smaller on the other along the outer edge, the outer edges here. But because I will probably use this again and again for Hilda, I want to have the separate pattern pieces. Then you need to add the seam allowance. This is cut and fold. Unless you're having a zipper up the front back, the centre back, sorry. In which case you would add a seam allowance and you wouldn't cut it on fold. And then we're just going to add the seam allowance. So this is going to be 0.5 centimetres because it's my half stand heel there. You can add the amount of seam allowance that you prefer. There's one. There we have it. So now it's a case of cutting those out. We have an under collar and we have a top collar. And if I lay them on top of each other, you can just see that the top collar, which is underneath, is slightly bigger than the under collar, which is on top. And there you have it. Those are the sailor collar pattern pieces. I'm now going to show you quickly how to mark off your facing as well. So for this, you're going to need the original back pattern piece and the original front with the line marking that you chose for your neckline. Okay. And what you're going to do is mark three centimeters down from your center back neck. Okay. I'm doing 1.5 because as I mentioned before, half size, half measurements. Trace off your back neck line. Measure three centimeters down the shoulder line. And then just connect the two. You can do it with straight line from the center back coming round, but it should follow the original. So I'm just gonna do mine like this. CB. And then the front we're gonna do here. So you wanna go from the point that you stopped your front neckline down to the center front hem. You're gonna trace off the new neckline, front neckline coming up into Okay, we want to come across three centimeters on the shoulder line so that we have the same join here as here and then five centimeters on the hem. So for me, that's going to be 2.5, 1, 2.5. And then you're going to connect the two with a nice curved line. Of course, you're going to want to add seam allowance to the outer edge and to the center front. Sorry, that's the inner neckline edge. Also the shoulder line. This does not need 
the hem does. So we'll add a centimeter to the hem as well. But the hem amount depends on how much hem allowance you have on the garment that you're making. This edge, we don't need to add seam allowance because we'll just overlock the raw edge. Or if we were going to attach a lining, which you wouldn't really on the kind of item that you're going to be using a sailor collar on. So that can be a raw edge. And then this is center front. Can you see that? And then the same for back piece. So nothing on the center back because that's on fold. We extend up. Nothing on the lower edge because that would be overlocked. Same seam allowance on the shoulder line. We're going to extend the shoulder line. And then also on the back neck. 0.5 for me and one centimeter or quarter of half an inch, whatever it is that you do. I hate working with such a small seam allowance. And there we have it. And the reason for this is because we want a nice clean finish on the inside. And the facing is how we're gonna do that. So you can see why I'm working with the smaller pattern pieces of Hilda. If I were to make this for my size every time I do a pattern tutorial, I would get through so much paper, I would struggle to get it all on screen and it would just be quite wasteful. But I will show you for those um, projects where I am making something for myself, I will show you full scale. And fear not, this paper will not go to waste. Like, I <laughs> I keep them and I make my lists on. My to-do lists, my shopping lists, anything that needs a list. So I hope you enjoyed that process of drafting a sailor collar pattern for yourself. I'm going to come back tomorrow and I'm going to show you how to sew it. And if you want to follow along, what you're going to need is a back bodice pattern piece and a front bodice pattern piece. I'm going to point out that you can use whatever pattern, I mean it should be the one that you've just created your sailor collar from, right? But in terms of design, like this is the basic block. Now what I can do is I can develop this into a design for Hilda. I just need to not do anything to the shoulder line or anything to the neckline, nor technically the center back until below the point where my collar sits. So what do I mean by that? Let me line it up. I haven't put seam allowance on that set back, have I, the center back? So anything from here down, I can do whatever I want to. Make it fitted, make it flared, anything. And the same for this part of the shoulder, I could extend it if I want it to. What I cannot do is anything to the shoulder line that's going to sit below the collar. The back neckline, you can't see that because my finger's behind. The back neckline, because that is based upon, the sailor collar pattern is based upon that. And then the center back seam down to about here. OK, and again, that's because we've based our collar pattern on that. We're also going to need our centre back facing centre. I keep calling it a centre back. I'm so flummoxed today. I need coffee, but there's no milk in the house and I'm refusing to go because it's always me that goes to the shop. So I'm basically on strike. Um, back neck facing. Then we have. This is the front bodice pattern. OK, and again, the same holds true for this. I cannot do anything to that center front neckline okay the shoulder seam anything else is fair game if i want to drop the shoulder down if i want to um deepen the armhole anything here i can do i can do anything to the front dart anything at all if i intend to use the full front facing that i created i also can't do anything to this center front seam okay but I could extend it from here onwards and have a button placket, a button tape, a button stand, whatever you call it. Um, I'm going to fill in the dart. I'm not going to use the dart, although I could have gathers or something instead. Like you can do things to what's remaining of your bodice pattern. You just can't mess with the areas that we used to create the sailor collar pattern. Now I'm going to stop waffling. So you'll need those six pieces tomorrow. Have fun. Um, if you're not watching this tomorrow, because I haven't told you about it and you're watching it later on um enjoy i'm gonna stop saying um don't forget to like the video if you've enjoyed it or if you found it helpful if you just want to support me because that tells youtube that you've enjoyed it and it means that they'll show it to more people 
don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more from me about sewing, pattern making, fashion design and draping. <laughs> I'll edit that blub out, brain freeze. And hit the notification bell to get notified by YouTube every time I post a new video. I think that's it. I will see you tomorrow. And then on Sunday will be my regular vlog. So I will catch you then. Bye.